Different subject. Different subject, basically planar linkages. We keep saying that the robot moves from point one to point two in space. Sometimes it's in space and sometimes in the planner, sometimes it's in 2D. And here are four different configurations of the mechanics of the robot itself, the joints themselves, how to actually make the end point moving from one place to another. We have the reverse motion linkage, which is A, it's the top left, where we have a fixed center, fixed pivot in the center, and when one part moves, the other part moves in the reverse direction. Another type of um, planar linkages, and we all on two, on two uh, dimension plan. It's the number, uh, it's uh, B, the picture B on the top right is push pull linkage. When we have two pivots in the center, and if we move the bottom part, the top fork will move in the reverse action, but parallel to the top. So it's a push-pull type of uh, linkage. The picture on the left, on the bottom left, is called parallel motion linkage. So again, we have two sets of uh, lines in parallel. One part is moving, the other part moving in the same direction. The fourth one is bell crank linkage, changing the direction of moving 90 degrees. So because we have the pivot in the center, we move the bottom part, the top parts will move vertically. Horizontal to vertical conversion in terms of link mechanical linkages. And here is another presentation of mechanical linkage called Hawkins. Hawkins linkage. And Hawkins linkage is a four-bar linkage. It's a very common mechanical uh, joints and movements of in robotics. And here on the bottom part, we see uh, O2 and O4. They are two bases and they are fixed and they have their position X, Y, and Z. We have an offset segment going to point A and from point A all the way to the straight line above, go all, all the way straight line above. And what we really want to move is that particular horizontal line, VX and AX, we want it to go straight and in very, very high precision accuracy. And the way we do that, we change the angle, theta, 180 degrees maximum. So when we rotate that segment, L, D, and we wrote it L3, or L4 and L3. When we change the position of these two uh, bars across that um, B point, which is the center, we will make that particular P moves and runs along a strain line in a very much controlled velocity. So the, it's the accurate part, the, the part, that, that horizontal line on the top is a line that is very close to a straight line, no matter if we have small errors in the angles and the movements of L3 and L4 segments. So moving the L3 and L4 in terms of angles still make L, um, VX uh, permanent and the, the, the point P running in a straight line along that horizontal line. And in industrial applications, we have pulley systems in robotics. Remember, we want as least amount of physical stress and mechanical stress at the end of the robot. So sometimes the um, end of the robot that that gripper section or the joints prior to the gripper needs to be connected mechanically to some pulley systems. And pulley systems, we gain power. We pay in terms of the displacement of where the gripper is, the displacement of, in this case, pulling a wire. But we spend much less energy. Let's look at, uh, let's compare the four pictures. 
We start with the left, number one. The force is 100 Newton force, and the displacement is only 10 centimeters. That's because it's one, it's a lower, de lower degree of the, uh, the pulling system. So we pull it and we apply a force of 100 Newton, and we apply it for a distance of 10 centimeters. Then we have the second configuration of the pulley system, number two, where because of this particular configuration, we need to apply half the amount of Newton's force. But the price we pay is that we have to pull it twice as long, 20 centimeter displacement instead of 10. And in the configuration number three of pulley system, we have to apply 33.3% of the 100 but we have to displace it. The robot has to move three times longer than in the first configuration. So there is a trade-off between the force that the robot apply and the distance that the robot should go from point to point. But the, the upper we go with the pulling system degrees, the less energy the robot consumes, the more accurate the process is, and the more reliable the process is, because the robot, as a mechanical system, will be much more stable. And we mentioned before something very, extremely, extremely important, which is called forward and inverse kinematics. It's when the robot goes to do a task, it goes with one set of conditions, one set of weights, one set of torques, one set of velocities. Once the robot it arrives at that particular location, picked an object, and that object has its own characteristics, weight, center of gravity, shape. This is where the robot as a whole, together with that particular object that we pick up, change, it, change completely its, its uh, characteristics. So we have forward kinematics with one set of conditions and reverse kinematics with another set of physical conditions. And when we do a path planning, and we want to go from point A to point B, pick up something and go back to point A, the path going back will be different than the path going toward that particular object. Because when I go there, I go without an object. When I come back, I come with the object. So the parameters, the physical conditions change. So path number one, is not identical to path number two because of the aspects of forward inverse kinematics, because of external physical forces, acceleration, deacceleration, velocity, mass, center of gravity, torque, etc., etc., etc. It one set of variables and there's another set of variables. That's the forward and inverse kinematics. And in order to achieve very effective going toward and going back, we have what you call elbow up and elbow down. And something extremely, extremely important when we actually look at this. When we think of elbow up, that means that the weight goes down and also that particular thing brings down, that previous joint. It's different when elbow is down. When elbow is down, the center of gravity somewhat changes, which allow us to to apply more force, more power, more dynamics to the gripper itself. Elbow up will be basically bring it down, bring it back. Elbow down will actually go naked, what you call it, going toward the object. And here in this particular uh, short video, is a presentation, actual presentation of elbow up and elbow down and a simulating movement of a robot from a peak place to a, uh, from a peak position to a place position. Please keep in mind, for most of the movement of the robot, the center of gravity of the robot is very close to the center of gravity of his base. The robot has a machine altogether that has links and joints. What we want to do in proper programming, path planning, 
is for most of the time, as much as possible, to have the joints and the links close to the home base, to the base of the robot. This is in order to reduce the torque, in order to reduce the overshoot and undershoot. We will talk, we'll talk about it in a minute. Once I get close, I'm working within a very, very narrow working envelope. When I get closer to the object that I need to place, this is where I need to stretch my hands, to stretch the joints and the, um, the links. And this will very close to the end point. Now, and you can see the reflection of that particular robot on the floor. Look at the line on the floor as it gets stretched. Now, this is where the robot actually pointing toward the place point, where we need to place that particular object in this video. And the first section of the path is where we direct ourselves to the object. The second stage of the path is when we stretch to go to the place position of the object, where the object needs to be. So every single path, we plan it in stages. We, change, we plan it based on modules. There is a base module and there is a stretch module. And these two modules, the game between them, the interaction between module number one and module number two of the path planning, needs to be very careful designed to minimize torques, minimize over or under shooting. If we will have over and under shooting, we will never get to the place position that we need to be.